Congress is able to identify not only how how does uh, the growth behave in the, in the field, but also to identify the seg with the segments what type of feed program you should apply to the animals. Okay, identifying that breaking points or that maturity date just by multiplying or subtracting the derivatives of the equation. That's why compares, I think it should be more used, should be used more frequently to nutrition to identify each of the segments of growth. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Walmsley, and I'm joined by Juan Espino. Hey, Juan, how are you doing today? Hello, Kelly. I'm just doing great. Um, can you give a little bit of background about, um, I guess, give your position and then a little bit of background about how you got to there? Okay, my name is Juan Gabriel Espino. I am from Guatemala. I am a veterinary who likes to do nutrition. I have a master's degree in here from San Carlos University. And I'm working right now as a, uh, uh, as a nutritionist in a meal here in Guatemala that is specializing in pigs, broilers, and layers. I know you had been on an episode before talking with um, Sam Rochel and talking about fiber. So now... Completely switching gears, we're talking about math, and um, now everyone's going to fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> or, or turn it off. Um, but no, math is math is really important, and um, sometimes it's hard. But uh, there's so many different things that we can do with uh, mathematics and statistical modeling and. Um, we've done a little bit of work in my lab with that, but something that I haven't used before and heard as much about is what you want to talk about today. So the Gompertz um, equation, right? Give us a little bit of information about it. Well, Gompertz was an equation that was formulated by Benjamin Gompertz probably like 200 years ago. And Gompertz was then, then later on a uh, uh, scientists start to using it to model, for example, growth of population, then growth of cancer cells, growth of bacteria in the lab. And probably like 70 years ago or 80 years ago, um, in the early early 90s, uh, they, they start to using um, to describe the growth of the animals. Okay? Uh, it's not just a uh, sigmoid shape graph. I mean, uh, of course, the line has that shape, but if you start to understand what is Gompertz about, you can get more information working with the derivatives that are described in Gompertz. So you can you are able uh, to describe the growth of the animals uh, because it's divided in different stages when you start to applying or to get these, these outputs of the equation and running with the derivatives. Uh, to learn or to apply, let's say in this way, the maturity points of each of the stages that are described in Gompertz. So if you see, for example, Brazilian tables and Indra in France, they use uh, very, they, they describe the growth with this type of nonlinear equations. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Why do you think that um, maybe it's maybe one of the modeling techniques that uh, might be less known or used in some of the literature whenever you're looking at like nutrition data? Why do you use it? The Gompertz? Probably because it's the, the line that fit very well to each point of the of the of the of the equation. For example, this equation needs two variables, time and growth. And if you start to run in Gompers, you are going to see that uh, this equation describes very well the, the the points of the growth. The growth is, is not linear. If you probably if it if if the growth where the, the growth of the animals is linear, probably you can include 100 grams of lysine and you, 
you will probably see broilers of two meters of, of hay, for example. But that doesn't happen in real life. I mean, uh, so Gompers uh, described perfectly the, the description of this uh, non-linear growth in animals and can help you to understand how to, the carcass is built, the, the, how long it takes the animal to get enough maturity to start an exponential growth, for example, uh, or a, a, how long, how, how many days are required to feed an animal with a pre-starter phase, for example. Gompers can help you to understand, to describe many aspects of growth and feed in, in animals. So I think it's a very interesting interesting tool that should be used more frequently in your, in your daily basis. So in the thinking about like, you know, I guess a lot of uh, nutritionists out there might be thinking about uh, some of the other neg- regression type models and use to do some prediction equations and looking at um, trying to optimize or, or determine the, you know, optimal amino acid concentration or energy um, to feed. Uh, and so that's not the type of thing that we're talking about here whenever we're talking about in the Gompertz model, right? I think Gompertz is the, compl- the complement of, previ- of the equation that we just mentioned, supply line, quadratic effect, breaking points, okay? Because in, in this, uh, this type of equations, you're trying to identify the correct application of a nutrient or the, let's say, the exact requirement, if we can put it in that way, that requirement that are necessary to reach that gain that you are expecting in a broiler or in a bullet or in a turkey, that it's okay. I think Gompertz is the complement of this previous equation that we just mentioned because they are going to describe, for example, the growth. Okay, you decided to, you identified that probably 1.20 is the requirement of lysine. Okay, then we take it this this requirement to the feed, make the formula, take it that formula to the to the field and feed the animal. And something that you are expecting is the value that uh, the output that was in the in the result that you are expecting. Well, Gompers is going to this, let's say in this way describe the growth, that linear growth that are uh, uh, that are, that is described in a, in a broiler or in a bullet. So in a way that you decided to apply that nutrient, then you're going to see the performance in growth. And one of the derivatives of, of, of Gompertz is to calculate the gain. Okay, it's true that the gain is described in, in the strain of the tape, in the guideline of the strain of the product. But I think with all the information that Gomper has, backgrounds or back, or back office, let's say, let's put it in this way, you can you are able to uh, describe or to model the gain using the derivatives of gain that is described in Gompers. And not only that, Gompers is able to describe to the, the the maturity rates in terms of time and in terms of rate in the three different stages that are described in the equation. Of course, when you see the equation, the equation does not describe the three stages. You have to Calculate, uh, not to calculate, because a mathematician has already done the, the dirty work, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so you only have to identify the derivatives and start to multiply and divide the coefficient the, 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 of the inputs that you introduce in Gompert. With that output, you multiply or subtract or divide these coefficients, and then you get uh, the maturity points. We were talking previously uh, uh, before, uh, before this interview, that Gompers is divided in three stages. A, a lag phase, or let's say, let's put it in the way, is a, a, a pre-starter phase. Then we have a second phase that is described as an exponential phase of growth. And after that, uh, after that, after the animal reached that gain or that maturity, we are going to see or it is going to describe a third stage that is called as a marginal stage, okay? So the derivatives are going to help you as a, uh, to a nutritionist to identify the breaking points of each of these uh, segments of the curve. And if you apply it or you identify this segment, it, you can take it back to the, to, the, to the lab and let decide that in 
You can identify how many days it's going to take the animal to get enough maturity to start the exponential phase. And this phase is going to be the black phase and probably in, with 1.20 requirement of lysine, for example, the, it's going to take you seven or 10 days to start that broiler to reach that expected weight that you're probably uh, trying to achieve in, in that period of time, in that period of seven to nine days, okay? So Gompers is able to identify not only how, how does uh, the growth behave in the, in the field, but also to identify the seg with the segments what type of feed program you should apply to the animals, okay? Identifying that breaking points or that maturity date just by multiplying or subtracting the derivatives of the equation. That's why Gompers, I think it should be more used, should be used more frequently to in, a, in nutrition to identify each of the segments of growth, okay? Yeah. So how, how, um, how are you using it? How have you seen it? How has it changed or um, in your day-to-day and -day how you're formulating and performance that you're seeing or what's the kind of, um, what, what's the exact benefit that you've seen um, from before you were utilizing it um, and then now? I think one of the most important things that I have seen using Gompertz is, is that you can build your own fit program when you should give a face, what, how many days it's going to take you to feed that animal with the face that you are uh, formulating? When does that next phase is going to start uh, uh, or uh, is required to feed the animal? And when you should stop feeding that animal with that second phase, the density of nutrients that you should be aware that we should be applying that in that specific phase, for example. And you're using that for a specific flock. So when that flock starts, and let's say there's disease that happens, or maybe those the that flock, those birds, um, I don't know, their, their weights are a little bit lower than typical. Um, maybe poor chick quality, I guess, just depending on what that, you know, what you're applying it to in the age. So then would Gompertz help to be able to determine when you should be changing a phase due to that chick's um, beginning weight that you're using? Well, yes, yeah, sure. Because, for example, if we have data from 100 flocks, for example, mm -hmm. and we are going to model the growth of the next 100 flocks of the year, okay? So that inputs, you put it in that in Gompertz, and you have the rates of growth, okay? And if you see that, uh, for example, in the, in, the, in the flock number 120, okay, you see some changes in growth, some changes in, I don't know, um, health of the animal. Right. Well, let me tell you that you have all the data, all the inputs that you have that you... you it's going to be more easy for you to identify that something is wrong with the growth of the animal. So to get started, you, you've got to make sure that you have a lot of data that could be relevant into your, I mean, you're, you're collecting data anyways, but you need to be, I mean, how much of a database do you need to be thinking about having um, before you're starting to implement this into your production? Well, probably... Is something that I see in field, you need around 30 or 40 flocks of inputs or information to start running your bumpers and to be more precise with the outputs of the of the of this equation. But something that is interesting about bumpers is the rates of change. Okay, bumpers have three three coefficients. Okay, A is the asymptote weight. Okay, B and C are rates of change of the this sigmoid curve. So in a way that you start to identify that slightly change of the rates, then you are you're going to see that the requirement that you are applying to your feed is not enough or is not a, enough density of nutrients to achieve that goal of, uh, that you are expecting or that gain that you are expecting in that specific day or in that specific week, for example. So 
Gompers can help you to work more precisely, especially when you know what you are applying in the feed, what is the density of nutrients that you are applying, and which is the growth of the animal that you are expecting. Because at the end of this, of the uh, at the end of the story, what you are expecting is is, is a carcass, it's a weight, a weight that uh, that pound, that kilo of of of, of, of broiler or that uh, dozen of egg is expected to generate uh, uh, revenues. So in a way that you know how to apply gompers, identify that growth and transform it in a way that that density of nutrients are, are permitting you to, to, to get that result, well, the gompers is going to be the complement of that previous uh, requirement that you analyzed with the equation that we mentioned before, like supply line or a quadratic uh, uh, equation. So in a way, you can model or you can land all that, that information in financial terms, okay? No revenues because you are working with gains, okay? And that is the core of this equation. For a lot of good information um, that people might be able to at least take bits of and be able to um, research a little bit further and um, hopefully be able to help their production as well. Well, well, thank you so much for your time today. And that's another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.